Hey, Connor Nichols here. We're going to talk about soft tissue ultrasound. It's a pretty short lecture. The objectives of the lecture today will be just identifying normal tissue, what muscle looks like, what sub-Q tissue looks like, vessels, etc. We'll go through abscess versus cellulitis, and then what air in the soft tissue looks like, and what some foreign bodies look like. So our technique, we're going to use the linear probe. Um, this probe has the highest resolution of all of our probes. As you know, resolution is inversely um, proportional to um, or inversely related to um, penetration. So the higher resolution, the less penetration. So this penetrates about seven centimeters and you want to use this probe for central lines, for an abscess, for um, IVs, um, you could use it for a kid for appendicitis because the child is probably going to be really skinny, but just know you need everything within about seven centimeters. Tegaderm. Please, please, please put a tegaderm on top of the probe. Clean the probe, wipe it off, then put a tegaderm on there once it dries because blood gets stuck around the rubber footprint and within the crevices there and especially if it's been dropped and there's a nick in it then it gets in those um, lines and the blood can get stuck in there and it's really gross um, and you would not want to be scanned with someone else's blood stuck in there that you can't clean out so please put a rubber or a tegaderm over it um, please use sterile gel um, so for all IVs, you want a tegaderm. For all abscesses, you want a tegaderm. If there's any drainage, you want a tegaderm. If you're doing um, an eyeball, I use a tegaderm. Um, any clean wound, just make sure you have the sterile gel and not the gel that we have in the warmers. I'm not sure if the other lectures covered this, but we use the red wipes for cleaning all of our ultrasound equipment. The red does not have the alcohol. The purple has alcohol in it, and the alcohol dries out the rubber footprint and it can crack. So please use red wipes only on the ultrasound probes especially. Um, if you can't find any you can always call the stock tech and they'll bring you a bottle and then you can just put it in the back of the ultrasound machine. So we'll scan through in sagittal and transverse whatever we're looking at you know whether it be an arm or an axilla um, we'll scan through in sagittal and transverse. This is normal tissue so let's go through this. Um, I believe this is someone's forearm um, so what you're up here is going to be whatever the probe is touching. So probe is here touching. So this is going to be your epidermis dermis. You can't really differentiate the two. The more hypoechoic or blackish um, area in here with some small echoes is the subcutaneous tissue. All this bright white here, here, in here. This is all fascia. This, I believe, is a bone because there's nothing behind it. So I think this is going to be the bone with no um, conducting no um, uh, um, echoes below that. So this is going to be a vessel. I believe it's an artery. Um, it's just not compressed. So I don't see it pulsating. But this is an artery with a nerve in the forearm. So nerve is hyperechoic and it looks like a honeycomb appearance. This area right here with all these lines, this is what muscle looks like. So typically when you're looking for an abscess, it's going to be up here in the sub-Q tissue. Um, so this just kind of gives you an idea of what the different tissues look like normally. So looking for signs of cellulitis. The things that we're going to look for are increased echogenicity um, and cobblestoning. So we'll talk about what this is. So Let's look at this image right here. So this whole area from here all the way down to here, so all of this is the sub-Q area or sub-Q tissue. This white line is the fascial plane. You can see a vessel in there. All this little black stuff that comes in here, this is edema um, or fluid. And it gives you what looks like a cobblestone street um, where the black would be like grass or gravel, um, dirt and then the the more hyperechoic area would be the stones. So this is what the tissue looks like. You don't see an obvious collection of fluid. It's all just kind of in between everything um, and that's classic cobblestoning of cellulitis. You can get this if somebody just has edematous legs but doesn't have cellulitis. So this is just fluid in the tissue so you want to clinically correlate whether you really think that they have an infection.
look at this example again, very similar sub Q area up here. You can see there's really no obvious anechoic collection. These are vessels right there. Um, so there's no obvious what we call abscess or anechoic collection. This again is what cobblestoning looks like. So let's look for signs of abscess. So abscess is going to be an anechoic collection. That just means no echoes, so it's going to be black. And sometimes you can see a squish sign. If you do see a squish sign, it might be a little bit hypoechoic rather than anechoic, uh, just because that would be more pus, um, and it does have a little bit of echoes. So again, our typical sub-Q area is here. Fascial planes, you know, are these bright white lines like here. Um, and then deeper is going to be muscle back here. So you can see what looks like there is more of a cobblestoning, and then we get this large anechoic area um, that is consistent with abscess. And so as you watch it fan through, you'll see an area about right here that is black, and it this is where it communicates with the skin. So when you're scanning through something right there, is where you're going to do your incision because that's where it communicates with the um, lower tissue. And then, you know, obviously you would want to probe around and make sure you get everything out. And then you can measure them and see exactly how um, large they are. And you can see on the right, uh, the 2.7 at the bottom, that's 2.7 centimeters. So you can see each little hash mark is 0.5. So the top one um, the first one down from the top would be 0 0.5, then 1, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, and then 2.7. So this is not very deep. This is, you're going to hit it at less than 0.5 centimeters um, in draining it. So there's just another example. It's just a little bit more complicated, and you can see it's not well, um, you know, it's in kind of different areas. It's, the most is here, and you can see it communicates right there with the skin. Um, so that would be where you would want to incise at that area. So there's definitely an abscess there. Um, just another example of, of a not so well um, circumscribed area of um, anechoic area, but still probably could drain it there where it communicates at the top. So this is just an example of, um, see this area here, and then all of this down here. And you can see it moving around. That's what we call the squish sign. Uh, right in here you see it moving. And then you can also notice these bright white dots here. Here, 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 all over here. You can see it moving around. So this is a lot more concerning. So um, there's obviously a large abscess in here, and these bright white dots we're going to talk about. Any guess of what those might be? So this is the squish sign. Those bright white dots are going to be air. So air is going to be hyperechoic. You can see some bubbling. Um, kind of like the air, you know, the bubbles just kind of fizzling and then you'll see dirty shadow because the air forms a dirty shadow, kind of like what you see with the bowels. So if you look at this image, you can see some anechoic area and then those bright white little dots are air within the tissue. So if you can see here, it's kind of bubbling. Definitely air in the tissue here. This all is abscess. It's, you see it's hypoechoic to the surrounding area. So anytime you see air like this, this is not good. Especially if the wound is not open. Um, I mean, if the wound is open, obviously air can get in. But if this is a closed wound and you see air, that is not good. So the bubbling, we saw that. And then take a look at this. Oh! I think this is my favorite video of all times that I've ever captured. So this was a lady's axilla. So you can see this huge abscess, all this air, bam, bam. Those are two huge, like, air bubbles coming across the screen. 
So her wound was closed, but this is clearly a gas-forming organism. So we call this necrotizing fasciitis, and this is not good. So this was turned a simple, what we thought, axilla abscess that we were just going to drain at the bedside to calling the surgeons and them taking it to the operating room. She ended up doing fine, but this is never something that you want to deal with on your own. So all in one, meaning just the squish sign in the air. Um, so if the wound is not open and you see air, be very concerned. So this is just an example of what some necrotizing fasciitis would look like. Um, it can be subtle. Um, it usually has a purplish tint to it. There usually are a blister here and there. It looks very necrotic. You usually see it in immunocompromised patients or diabetics. Um, but you can see it in very healthy people. And if it involves the perineal area, then we call that Fournier's gangrene. I actually had a case um, in RAS of a 20-something-year-old boy. Um, I think he just had sickle cell. Um, and he came in with his leg just looking awful. And he was just almost crying. His leg hurt so bad. And um, I was really concerned about necrotizing fasciitis. And I ultrasounded it. There was definitely air in the tissue. You can also sometimes feel crepitus. Um, this is you know, something that you want to call the surgeons on immediately because this is a surgical emergency. And this is what you might end up looking like if, uh, you know, you get a bad case and they have to debride you. So all of these images are off the internet, so this is not a patient I had. Um, and I don't know if you're familiar with the Lerenic score. Um, this is just a score. This came from, um, you can see the reference at the bottom, Critical Care 2004. You can do this calculation and basically figure out their score. And anyone with a score of six or greater it's about a 90% chance that they're going to have necrotizing fasciitis. So you, show, you may still have 10% that don't have that, and they still have necrotizing fasciitis, but this just kind of gives you a better idea. Um, and, you know, something nice to be able to tell the surgeons when you call them. So air versus foreign body. So we've looked at air. We know it's hyperechoic, um, and not every foreign body is going to look like this. I mean, wood and, you know, things like that are going to be a lot more difficult to see. Um, probably not going to show up on ultrasound. But things like glass um, and, you know, things that are hard plastic are going to be a lot easier to see. So, again, think about our sub-Q tissue is up here, muscle here. I believe that's a bone in the bottom right corner right there. And then we see this hyperechoic area with some shadowing behind it. So the difference is going to be that the um, uh, air is not going to shadow in a clean way. Air is more of a dirty shadow, so it kind of shimmers, twinkles, and doesn't stay the same very quickly. It changes very quickly, almost like the bowel peristalsing moving around as the air moves around. Um, and then the um, foreign body with uh, like glass foreign body um, or bone, as you see right there, is going to be a very well demarcated um, shadow posterior to the object. So you can see on the right is bone with um, a dense shadow behind it. And then you see those hyperechoic areas with a dense shadow behind it. And these are likely glass in the tissue. That's it, really. So any questions, email me, cnichols at ufl.edu. Thanks.